Yeah. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench here for you. So this is the end of the build series for the Super Duper Mega Ultralight 138G 4S 5-Incher V2.2. <laughs> so we're going to end this build video uh, series. I have a playlist on this. So every single component, every single thing you see uh, on the drone is in a playlist and on the right hand side there's a bar it'll say like vtx or receiver or frame uh, so if you need to look at that all the hardware has its own video and this is going to be more of a firmware uh, we're going to go into bioheli uh, we're going to go into beta flight and we're going to take a look at the screens on my radio master for inputs and uh, mixers so that's what this video is about so stay tuned So trying to wrap up this build series video, I have to apologize. It's been taking me a little while. I've actually filmed this three times, um, went into editing and almost kind of wrapped it up and scrapped it. It just, it just didn't flow. It didn't make sense. And honestly, I just didn't like it very much. Uh, so I scrapped it and I've tried to film two more times. I think the issue I'm having is I'm wanting to go in and show every single detail and I think I'm kind of beyond that that's that's not what I want to do with this uh, I, I've worked on this thing for quite a while I had the uh, if you've been following along on the channel you already know but if not uh, I had the prototype a version one um, the version 1.2 I guess and then I completely scrapped that one and I made a version so this is the the version two and this is an absolute ball super fun but there's a couple things i didn't much care for on this one uh which this one flies awesome it, it it's my number one uh this one here i've modified a couple things changed a couple things around as far as hardware uh the canopy things of that nature and that's why this is the v 2.2 because there's really not a whole lot of other changes so all of the BioHeli 32 settings, all the Betaflight settings, and all the transmitter settings, like everything is the same. So what I'd like to do instead of filming this uh, monstrosity of a three hour video and editing everything, um, I just want to go through some pertinent information that you might need to know as far as like making sure your motors are spinning the correct uh, direction and the correct motor is spinning correctly. Uh, going into Be BioHeli uh, 32 and making sure that those settings are ticked and put to the correct amount. And then the beta flight. When it comes to beta flight, I really think uh, just making sure that uh, the beta flight version is the same on this one as this one and just putting the dump file on it. And I am planning on putting the dump file on my Facebook if that's an issue email me see see how to get that um, dump file to you and then i'll show here uh, some settings i'll go through my radio master screens and just some of the things that i have set up um, so that's kind of how i'm going to uh, finish out this build series um, so let's go ahead and get started the first thing we want to do is take a look at the version of uh, v2 and make sure that v2.2 has the same version so we need to jump over beta flight for that all right we're going to go ahead and plug our usb into version 2 and we're just going to check to make sure let's go ahead and move it around and we'll go ahead and get a version and a target so here we're going to find our version is 423 September 20 and that's what we need to make sure that we flash to our new one uh, the new flight controller I don't think comes with this one I think it's an older version and then also our target that we need to use uh, for flashing so I'm gonna go ahead and write this information down real quick and unplug and go ahead and disconnect and 
an unplugged version 2 the one I've basically spent nine months tuning and tweaking on so now I'll go ahead and plug in v2.2 connect him up yeah everything's moving the way it should so we're good and connected and see what's on then so the brand new board that was sent to me is 420 and the same target so we do need to update the firmware uh, to match the other one so that's uh, pretty important I'll go ahead and disconnect here and I will so now we have the version off of here which is uh, 423 um, and I'll set him aside now we're kind of we're kind of done with him for right now and we're unplugged from the computer but I'm still plugged into the quadcopter and we're going to boot this board all right so we just grabbed the instructions real quick just to make it easy for you here so the USB connector so our orientation is like so let me zoom in for you here just kind of refocus so you can see that all right so the USB connector is right here and then just straight back is the boot button so that's what we need to push down is the boot button see if I can angle this just right let me zoom in for you here so as you can see the USB port is right here and then if you follow back from the power line going in and right on the other side of that you see that little that little gold color right there that's the boot button all right so we just need to get in here and push on that let me zoom out for you so I'm gonna go ahead and push down on the boot button I like to use something like a, a wooden dowel uh, I don't like using metal especially tweezers because uh, that little boot button membrane the little pad membrane can pop off and let me tell you if that pops off or you tear that off it's a real it's a real pain so we're going to push down on that and we'll go ahead and plug in our quadcopter all right and on beta flight we just want to make sure that dfu mode has come up if you didn't have dfu come up uh, then you need a driver issue so this is attic or something uh, to fix a driver update the driver to get the dfu to come up so you have the USB port plugged into your computer powering the flight controller while you were pressing on the boot button. So DFU should come up. Go to update firmware and we want to go and find, so we have our release candidates and we're going to go find our HGLRC Zeus target that we wrote down. If you remember it was HGLRC Zeus F722 underscore AIO. So here we go. So we choose now be careful hglrc f22 it's not underscore so this is not the right firmware for that flight controller so we need to find out what's going on so let's look around a little bit see if they stuck it in somewhere else so now here's the zeus information now you see here zeus f722 all-in-one made by HGLRC that's the one that we want and now we can go down here and choose the correct firmware version um, which is 42.3 so we're gonna go find 42.3 and the reason why I chose that is because this is the most stable version so we'll click on it and now here's all the information from the manufacturer when you're gonna firm firmware update this and some of the bug fixes All right, so we're going to load the firmware from online. So from this information here, it's going to load up the information that we need. Scroll down here, and we're all loaded up, and I'm going to flash the firmware. And we're just going to sit here and wait on that to be done. So you want to make sure when you when you choose that you want to do a full chip erase 
Okay. So that way it gets rid of everything on the flight controller. Normally I would fast forward through this part because it's just kind of boring, but I think it's kind of nice when people on YouTube show you the, the full length of how long it takes. Because sometimes when you're doing something and it takes a really long time, you start to question, like, is that really supposed to take that long? Or, you know, it also kind of depends on... All right. So we're all done in there. The COM port came up. We'll connect to the COM port. All custom defaults board available. Apply the custom defaults. Now the beeper came came on because. We'll go ahead and connect back up here. We'll just move our quad around. Make sure it's moving the way it should. Um, the reason why the beeper was coming on is because in here we had. Uh, one of these beeper announcements were on. Everything in here is all set to default. These are not the things that we're going to use. We're not going to fly this quadcopter like this. We're going to change this. We're going to change these. There's a lot of changes. And unfortunately, when I was in this, uh, <laughs> when I, I filmed this and edited it, I had so much time involved in just explaining stuff. I'm not going to go through all that. Um, there, this is really a learning curve to understand how to use Betaflight and the things that are in here. Uh, what I would like to do is just dump file this. So I'm going to go ahead and go into CLI and I'm just going to make sure that everything uh, is correct. I'm going to go to version and for 2.3 and the target, everything looks perfect and I'm going to disconnect. All right, so we just disconnected in beta flight and this flight controller is doing its reset and I'm going, to, we are disconnected from beta flight. I'm gonna disconnect this flight controller. Now what I'd like to do is go ahead and grab up V2 and I'm going to pull the dump file. So I'm gonna plug him in, we're gonna jump back to beta flight I'm going to go ahead and connect up, make sure that our old and trusty V2 is ready to go. So in ports, you can see UART1 is used, and UART3 is where we have our VTX. And in configuration, we have reversed, and we have 300, motor stop, bi-directional, D-shot, 12 magnets. All these things are already set. 8, 4, we don't have that. All these custom settings are all finished. And the PID tune, here's my PIDs. PID controller settings. Profiles. Profile settings, so here's my rates. Filter settings. My modes. So we have arm, angle, horizon, beeper, air mode, flip over, and pre-arm. And this is where all of them are set. OSD, some of the things that I have checked. And I am using a PAL camera. Video transmitter. This uh, is really nice because they use TRAMP protocol. It makes it so much easier. The Zeus Nano VTX. Um, you just download that from this page right here. Uh, super easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into CLI here and I'm going to grab a dump file. So I'm going to just grab dump, click enter, and I am going to grab this entire file all the way up and I am going to copy to clipboard okay and I'll disconnect go ahead and unplug version 2 and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in version 2.2 .2, our brand new one 
All right, we have our COM7. Go ahead and connect. I'm just going to move around V2.2. Our brand new flight controller has now uh, been updated, but none of the settings are, are correct, as we can see here. I'm going to CLI. I am going to click here, and I am going to paste. So I'm going to control V. You see the, you see the little number symbol here. You have to hit enter. There's a lot of information there. So go ahead and hit enter and it will upload all the settings of nine months of messing around with this quadcopter. Uh, everything I've done is now in this dump file. So we are just going to let me backspace there. I accidentally put a symbol in here. So now it's going to load every single thing. So now this is all of V2 into V2.2, but we have to save and enter. All right. So now comms come back up and connect again and move it around. Make sure if you're, um, if you take your quadcopter, hold it nice and level, as level as you can, and face it towards the PC, not your screen, but your PC. Um, so you would just hold it straight now, and then Z-axis. So now forward, back, right, left. See how fast that's moving in my hand and on the screen at the same time? Um, if you're moving it quickly in your hand and, and on the screen it's going really slow, but in your hand you're moving it around really fast, then there's something wrong with your accelerometer or gyro. So you can lay it really flat, come up here and calibrate your accelerometer. If that doesn't work and it's not wanting to move around nice and fluid like this, um, try try to disconnect and reconnect and then re, redo your uh, calibration on your accelerometer. But now we can see in ports, we have these settings. We can go into configuration and all of my settings the things that I've added and subtracted and all that stuff. The only thing you're going to want to change is the name of your craft. Um, it doesn't bother me if you want to fly around with props off, but I, I would imagine you want your own name in there. Um, so these are all the uh, different settings, battery, modes. Everything is the same as it should be. The VTX table has transferred as well. And that's that's it. That's it for beta flight. Let's jump back over to the bench. We'll go ahead and disconnect. All right, so we're unplugged from beta flight and our flight controller's powered down. Our flight controller is now up to date. It matches the V2. Uh, so our V2.2 now matches the same firmware and all the settings. So nine months of messing with him is now been transferred to this one. However, the BLHeli 32 ESC firmware needs a couple setting changes. So what I'd like to do now is plug in V2 and we're going to take a look. We're going to jump into BLHeli 32. And we're going to take a look at the BLHeli uh, settings that I have in here. And we need a LiPo for that. So I have my trusty old 650 tattoo. I think I'm embarrassed to say this thing's about three and a half years old. The IR is way higher than it should be. Uh, a new battery should have at full charge around five to eight IR. This one's well above that, unfortunately. Uh, but I do have some lipos on the way, some R lines coming. But the 650 tattoo 4S, in my opinion, is the best power to weight ratio uh, lipo for this build. Uh, it just it really flings the thing around. It's super agile. You can drop from way above in the sky down to a foot or two from the ground and 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 fly out of it without smashing into the ground. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plug a lipo into version two. We're just going to take a a peek at the ESC settings. So we need to jump over to BioHeli 32. All right, we're over here at BioHeli 32 suite. Just going to plug in the USB port and we can see COM8 come up and connect to it and now to read the setup we need to power up the ESC the USB port isn't um, going to read the setup so you can see nothing's happening so you have to plug in your lipo so of course make sure your props are off then plug it in 
I have a music uh, note configurator, uh, so I do have music tones going. And now we're going to read setup on the BL Heli 32 ESCs, and here is all the information for those. Okay, and then ESC overview. So some of the things that um, we have changed are highlighted here. So the only thing I can suggest is just to go in. Now obviously the music thing is, is another video if you will. But the ramp up power is at 35%. The uh, PWM frequency is at 48 kilohertz. And the motor timing is at 22 degrees. Those are the kind of the vital changes that I made. And then also I reversed these two uh, motors. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, the only modifications that we've done in here is just the ramp up power and the motor timing and the frequency. Okay. And then the music, if you're wanting to do music when it, you know, your ESCs chimes up, um, there, there's all kinds of videos on that already. There's no reason for me to go through that unless there's a whole bunch of people that want me to do it. Controls enabled as soon as you click off that. The flight controller is disconnected. So we can go ahead and remove our LiPo. And remove our USB port. So now we've seen the settings that we have in here. We're just going to make sure that they are set properly in here. So we'll plug in the quadcopter. And we'll go over to BLHeli32. And we will connect. Okay. Let me see here. Com7. I had to change the com. You see that? <laughs> so connect. All right. And plug in our lipo. And I don't have any music on this one. So we'll go ahead and read the setup. And everything comes up. And... Ramp up power, I've already changed this behind the scenes because as I said earlier, I've filmed this uh, three times and I've made appropriate changes to uh, the settings here. But now we need to go to the motors. All right. And yes, the props are removed. We'll go ahead and ramp it up. Ramp up number one. So motor one is spinning in the correct direction. This is motor one and it's spinning in the correct direction. That's what we're checking here. So now we go to motor two. Motor two is, is spinning in the clockwise direction. So that's good. And we'll go to motor three. All right, motor three is spinning in the wrong direction. So motor three, it is motor three that's spinning but it's in the wrong direction. So we need to change that. And motor four. Motor four is spinning in the wrong direction. So we need to change that. So let's go back over here. We'll uncheck here. Go back to ESC setup. And we will read the setup. Hit okay. Now motor three. I'm sorry, let me see, ESC3, we want to change to reverse, so we want to reverse it, and we will write the setup. ESC3 is written correctly, now we can go to ESC4 and change it as well. The motor direction is incorrect, so now we will correct that, okay, and we will write the setup, and now ESC4 has been written, we okay. We'll turn on our ESCs and go back to motors. All right. A loose connection on my, didn't plug my lipo in all the way here. All right, so yes, the, I agree that I have removed my props. And again, we'll just check this. So motor one is spinning in counterclockwise direction. That's correct because we're in a props out orientation. 
and motor two is spinning in the correct direction. We already knew this, but I'm just going through it again. Now motor three is now spinning in the counterclockwise direction. So we've corrected it and motor four. Motor four is now spinning in a counterclockwise direction. So it is good to go. This should be all ready to rock and roll. So we're done in BL Heli 32. So we go ahead and disconnect there and we'll jump back over to the bench. All right, over at the bench, we'll go ahead and disconnect our LiPo. Disconnect the USB port. So as of right now, we have basically uh, two identical quads, but in your case, you only have this one. I am I am done with this quad. I'm gonna go ahead and put him away. I can't wait to fly him again. So V2.2 is now all ready to go, except for one thing. We need to get our uh, transmitter. We already have our receiver bound. So the transmitter has a model made and a receiver bound. So we need to grab it and look at some of these settings. So what we've done, and I tell you what, this has really been something to film. And uh, I think this is kind of the way I want to do it. I will give you the dump file. Uh, these are the things that you need to go through to check for yourself to make sure if you run into issues you don't understand, I'll try to do what I can to help you out in comments. Um, if you think there's a better way that I could translate all of this information to you in a better way, a better fashion, you know, put it in comments. Uh, let me know. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put that dump file on Facebook so you can just copy and paste it. Um, but let me go ahead and grab the Radio Master transmitter and we'll go ahead and get those settings done. All right, so we have our transmitter. Go ahead and power him up. All right. So we have our throttle down, all our switches back. Now we'll go ahead and go to our model select and we're going to go to the one that we set up previously which is the v2.2 so here's the v2 and then the v2.2 so we'll go ahead and choose that one hold down select that model all right so we have the correct one in there and then here i'll i'll get a picture eventually of it to put in uh, but we want to go ahead and hold down our model and we already have our bind done uh, the other thing that we have to do here in this screen is the uh, RF, sweet, RF frequency fine tuning, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Uh, you need to do this for the FR Sky receiver that's in here. We did an RXSR. Oops. So we did the RXSR in here, and in the previous video, if you look on there, it'll on the right hand bar, it'll say receiver. Uh, the whole binding process, the firmware update, or I should say downgrade, uh, that's done. All those things were done. So now we're ready to go. This screen is, we have our fail safe to no pulse and everything is bound up. And I'm just going to give you a little look at internal RF and here's some of the settings. And this is the 40th quadcopter on this transmitter. So everything's set up. So we go ahead and page over page over again I'm going to page and now we're at inputs we're going to go ahead and put our inputs in and as you can see here we have uh, TAER if you're not familiar with how these are are here I explained it in the receiver video so you might want to revisit that we've used up four channels so right now this quadcopter is ready to fly we have throttle we have yaw we have pitch and roll but in beta flight you have to have arming um, so we not, we have to put another uh, option in here for arming. We also want to have an option for angle, horizon, and acro. And we want an option for our beeper. So if we want to flip our switch, we can have a beeper screaming in the grass so we don't lose it. And also, it, and the, we want to have turtle mode. The reason why I probably wouldn't use turtle mode on this, you know, if I'm in a parking lot and I crash and it's far away or something, I might try it out. Uh, I really don't like turtle mode on something like this because it'll just burn your motors, especially if you're in the grass or somewhere. But I tell you what, sometimes you get stuck in a tree 
and turtle mode comes in super handy. You just barely kind of bump it a little bit and, and it actually crawls itself out of the tree. Uh, so definitely want to have turtle mode. Why wouldn't you? So all these different things that we want to do are more channels. So I'm going to set up the first channel and then I'm going to jump through this video. So we're going to go ahead and, oops, let me go ahead and return. And if you hold it down, it'll capitalize the letter and input. So this is our input uh, one. So I'll go ahead and scroll over to A1. You can do whatever you want right here. Input name. Um, I find it to be pretty easy to do it this way. Uh, line name. So we're going to name this arm. So I'm going to hold that down for a capital A. And R. And M. If you just tap it real quick, it'll be uh, lowercase. And if you hold down on it, it'll capitalize it. And then hit return, slide down here. What source? Where do we want this? I want it on this switch. I want the arm, because when I fly, I have my finger right here, and I arm and disarm really quick. It's muscle memory. It's over time. Whatever you want to choose. See how that just switched? That, that just changed. All the way up is arm for me. That's what I want, so I'm going to choose that. I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to hit return. So now our next channel of our 16 channel receiver is used up. So the five is completely used up. So now we're gonna go ahead and go down to the next one. And in this one, I'm just going to say A2. This will come into play when we get into mixers. A2, and I am going to name this uh, modes. We'll just do modes, how about that? All right, and then on this switch is the one I want it to go to. So watch, it'll change here. So all the way down is going to be angle mode, and in the middle will be horizon, and all the way up will be acro. And how do I know that? Because in Betaflight, in the modes tab, we already looked at the modes tab, that's the way it's set up. So input channel, we'll go back in there and make sure that these switches are correct. If they're not, we'll just change it in modes. So we're done in here. Go back out, return back out. And now the next one we're going to do is beeper. All right. Now I like to use my arm switch. So in the first position, it'll arm all the way up but in the middle it's unarmed and the beeper will come on so as you pull this up to arm it the beeper comes on it's kind of a nice thing to have and then also in the field you can find it in the bushes but it gives you an audible sound before you arm so that's what we want to set up and that one's done and now we need uh another another one here Go to four, and we're going to name this one Turtle. And the source, so I want to use this switch here. This switch all the way forward, that's, that's the switch that I want to use. So that's what we're going to choose, and we'll go ahead and return out. And then I need one more uh, for air mode. I like to turn air mode off. Oops. Let me see. We need one more. So I, I like to turn air mode off with a switch. So when I pull up on this momentary switch, air mode is disabled. When you let go of it, air mode comes on. The reason why I like to be able to disable it is because if I see that I'm going to crash or something bad's about to happen, I can, I can avoid that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and... Put air mode on a switch. So this would be A5. Is that right? Let me look here. Yep, A5. All right. And we're going to call this. We'll just call it air. All right. And 
that'll be on our momentary switch right here. So now SH will be the option and return back out. So now we have throttle, yaw, pitch and roll, and we have our arming, we have our modes, we have a beeper, our turtle, and air mode. One last thing we need to do, and I recommend this really highly, you, you really should set up a pre-arm. Because right now, your quadcopter will arm if you have that switch all the way up. That's not something you want to do. I know this is an ultralight 5-inch quadcopter, uh, but it, it's just, in my mind, unsafe to do it that way. A lot of people have, Betaflight has a throttle um, flag. If your throttle or the, the firmware thinks that your throttle's up a little bit too high, it won't arm. So a lot of people will say, oh, I've got my throttle all the way up and it can't arm. Uh, for me, that's just not good enough, uh, especially in the winter time. You got a jacket on or something. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to also use the same momentary switch for uh, disabling air mode. We're going to use that as a pre-arm because the pre-arm only uses one time. So we're going to pull that up and arm it. If that sequence isn't correct, it won't arm. So I highly recommend doing this. And back in the day, there used to be logic switches to make that happen. And Betaflight made it so simple. It put it on a mode switch. Uh, so let's utilize that. So this is what, A6? This goes super fast when you're not filming. And... We're going to call this pre-arm. Uh, that's good enough for me. And watch source. So we're going to use our SH switch again. We're going to kick return. All right. So now we have everything set up here. All right. So now we need to page over to mixers. We need this information in here for beta flight to recognize it. And the only thing we need to do is say the mix name. And this one is A1. Makes it super simple, right? Hit return, return, and now you see A1 has come up. All the information we just uh, put in is now in place for our mixers. The mixers is what goes into beta flight, and that's what gives the information to make that movement. Um, let me see here. So this is A2. Hit return, return, and now we have that mixer involved. It kind of it's defaulted in the uh, OpenTX firmware. Uh, the rest of the information, we don't have to go in and, and program every little thing. So this is A3. Turn, turn. All right, so we have all of our mixers in, and now we're going to page the next outputs. Uh, we need to make sure that we're 1,000 on all four um, throttle Yaw, pitch, and roll, and then all the way up in here is going to be 2000. So we go to the receivers tab in beta flight, and you can go in and change the first four. Don't change anything else, only the first four channels. So your throttle's channel one. Um, if you set it up the way I did in, in the receiver video, so we're kind of you can kind of modify that on your own. You just go in, click on it, and then you can change this value. And you can watch it on the receivers uh, tab in beta flight to modify. So you'll hold your stick down. Your, well, in this case, throttle. You'll have it all the way in the down position. And you'll modify that until it says 1,000. And then kick it up to 1,000 uh, or kick it right down to 99.98 or 9.998. Get it to 1,000. And if you go all the way up on throttle... Let me zero that back out. You go over to this one, and now you can change it. So in beta flight, it'll say 2,000. Okay? Page over. We're not messing with curves or global, and logic switches are kind of a thing of the past in a way, but lots of special features and functions. You can make your transmitter scream all kinds of commands to you. Um, so you can go in here and you can have music set up. You can have whatever. Whenever you flip a switch, it'll tell you what the switch is that you just pushed. And it'll really be a fun uh, thing to do if you want. All right, moving along here. 
Um, special functions are just a really interesting thing for you to do if you want to play around with that to make sounds and things. I'm not messing with it. Um, custom scripts, I'm not messing with that. And then in telemetry, um, there's going to be some, some default, basic default information in here. Uh, but there is something I've kind of messed up on. Let me zoom in real quick here and show you. All right, in the instructions here, um, there's a R1 and a T1 pad. And I had soldered the receiver in the receiver video. I had soldered the ground, the 5 volt, the R1 for S bus, and then the T1 for smart port telemetry. And I figured I would just soft serve all that uh, and go through all the steps for that. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little easier on myself. Um, see, I didn't notice, but they had, they had T or uh, yeah, T1 going to the crossfire. But if you look here at the RXSR, they just leave it out. Like they're not even hooking anything up for you to get your telemetry. The telemetry data coming from your RXSR goes to your radio. So you can do tricky stuff, right? And have cool displays and all kinds of things. Uh, so we need to get that wire correctly ran. We can't use this one um, unless we do something with that pad because we're already using this UART. But I'm just going to make it like super simple on myself. And I'm going to go right over here to the fourth pad down, which is T2. It's an unused uh, transmit pad. So we're going to go ahead and use it. So I will go ahead and solder the quad up real quick. I'm just going to simply take that wire from here and I'm going to put it over to here. So let me do that real quick. All right. Let me zoom in on the quad real quick. So we had originally soldered ground 5 volt RS bus. And then on this pad here, we had the T pad uh, from the RXSR. So what I've done is I've actually just taken that single wire out of the loop, pulled it underneath and soldered it in here to the uh, T2 pad. So now when we plug it in, we should have full telemetry data. Um, let me go ahead and zoom back out. Pull this in real quick here. And all right, I have a, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go put the quadcopter in a cage real quick. All right, so now when we go down here, we'll have all this telemetry data coming up. And that's the only hardware change that we've had to make. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is um, to get that information, you just go down here to discover new sensors and then stop discovery and then everything will come up. All right, so we'll go ahead and return, and then let me go back to the um, the input screen here. I made a little change. I want to show you real quick. Let me zoom in on my screen. So on the RSSI, uh, I just want to show you real quick. Let me edit that. So I have A12 RSSI. And then uh, th I've named that. And then the source, you have to go uh, to RSSI to pull the telemetry data. And then your scale needs to be 100 dB and your weight 100%. So those are the things you're going to change. Let me return page over to mix. And we're going to slide down to 12. Edit that so I can show you. A A8 and then A12. 200% and negative 100%. And then in beta flight, we need to change something in there. Let me go ahead and return out of here. So that's it. This. Uh, right, so let's go over to beta flight real quick and look at those changes that we made. All right, we're connected up to beta flight. We'll jump in here. Um, ports tab. We'll you are two. We'll we'll end up. We'll just go ahead and save that now. So we'll end up changing that wire. Um, tramp protocol for VTX should be on UART 3, so that should be all good. I had to save it because I changed, I went in here and changed this smart port telemetry over to uh, UART 2. I'll, I'll reset out of that wire here in a little bit. Uh, configuration, go through here, make sure telemetry is turned on. Uh, everything here. 
turn on signal lost. Yeah, actually, I'd like to have that. Beeps when the AUX channel is set for beep. Yeah. Not sure why that wasn't set on the other one. Let me go ahead and save that so I don't forget. And this tab, we had to channel 8 to get our RSSI value up. So when you go to setup screen, you can see the RSSI here. And then if I cover up, cover up all the antennas with my with my leg, you can see it's articulating around. So that's good to go all the way to the bottom. Can you see it says nine? What was that nine eighty seven? So we can come over. Oops. Oh, for crying out loud! Let me see here. Inputs. outputs I said inputs I meant outputs good grief so we can change this until you can see that lifting up so it's up to a thousand we'll go to a thousand one and then go to a thousand one and back off one there all right and now we'll go over here to this one we'll lift the throttle all the way in the up position see how it says 2011 oops so we'll change this down take it to 2000 and then bump it to 2001 and then back one. There we go. And I'll do the rest later. Um, let me see here. Augs channels. So we have Augs 1. Let me get these. Augs 1 and 3 come up. So that's beeper and arming. And then turtle mode. We have turtle mode on Augs 4. And then here we have um, pre-arm and air mode. So that should do it. Let's jump over here and make sure they're correct. I don't know if you know this or not, but you can't arm your quadcopter um, while it's plugged into a USB port. So while it's plugged into USB, you're not able to actually arm it. So it's just going to disable. But you can see here that... Um, when I put my switch all the way up, it's coming in correctly. All right. And then this switch here is for angle and horizon. So you can see here, angles connected, click in the middle, and then all the way up is default. Nothing's chosen. That's uh, Betaflight's default is, is acro or air. So uh, beeper, we just go one step up. So that kind of that lights up and then we pull up on the the switch here now you see there's nothing happening so i must have got something so i flip over and crash is working see how it jumps over here and then pre-arm nothing so we have uh to change that go ahead and air mode auto to five and then change this to five okay so now when i pull up on that let me save it so you can see where I'm pulling up on the momentary switch the air mode turns off and then when I let go of the switch and I'm regular you know flying the air modes on so that's a good thing um, and then when I pull up on the switch pre-arm comes on so now I'll able to pull up on my switch and arm the quadcopter and then as soon as I let go of that and it's armed that pre-arm is done that it, it beta flight doesn't use it anymore so then we're going to use it as our uh, air mode so everything looks right so we did have to change a UART because uh, in the transmitter we put um, a different input than the uh, other quad so I'm, I might have switched something around here for Augs 5. So that's all done. Everything should be done. Every, As far as I could tell, let's go ahead and save just in case we forgot. And we'll disconnect here. And this is all done. So we'll return here. We should be able to go ahead and get this out to the field and give it a fly. So I'm ready to go ahead and uh, put some props on this little dude. And take it out for a little rip. All right, here it is. Yeah, <laughs> gonna maiden it for the first time. Can't wait. Go ahead and get this baby plugged in. 
Cross your fingers. All right. Got her. Got her set right there on the ground. So that's it right there. All right. Pre arm works. Go ahead and idle it up, and I'm going to turn my transmitter off. Still connected. All right. Fail safe works properly. Go ahead and turn the transmitter back on. Oh, got all kinds of alarm beeps going on. I forgot to turn the OSD off on that camera. Oh, she's she's pretty smooth. Got a little bit of a breeze today. Not too awfully bad. Oofta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a ripper. You'll have to excuse the lipo. That's like three, over three year old lipo. I got new ones on the way, but I don't know. They're sitting somewhere between here and California. So. Wow. I, I mean, my, my hands are shaking. She's really smooth and she, she studies out pretty nice. Go ahead and get a get a punch on film for you here. Ooh. Pretty nice. Looks like our RSSI is working good. Telemetry data is coming through. Need to check the VTX setting real quick and make sure I'm on what I think I'm on. All right. Yeah, I'll have to have to get rid of that Fox Ear OSD. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. Ooh.
Yeah, rates are good. Yeah, these batteries are garbage. They're uh, they're kind of done. But that's it. I tell you what, this build series has been quite something. I I didn't think I was gonna do like a part per part kind of thing, and I hope it turned out really good. Hope you liked it. Well, there it is. Amazing little ripper. That thing's something. I mean, it just it gets so much fun. I uh, hope I hope you uh, enjoyed this build series. Uh, I know I did. Something very unusual for my channel to split it all up like that. Um, but yeah, I hope that this helped you out. I hope you are entertained, and I hope you like it. And if you were, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you hate it, man, you give it a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.